morning. Amen. Amen. It will not be always. Amen. 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 That's right. Just keep speaking, man. Command that that level three drop to a level two. One. Level one and a level zero. Amen. You speak to it. Amen. Use your Amen. spiritual authority. You know you have spiritual authority yes. in Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. You have authority to speak yes. to mountains. Amen. Issues and command Go. them to move and to be cast into the sea, and they Jesus. must obey. Oh, yes. Amen. Because you are a child of God. Yes. You're a child of the King. You have His authority. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to believe that. Yeah. Say believe. I believe. I believe. Yeah. believe that. Step out in faith and watch what happens. Amen. You know, after listening to so much great preaching and teaching over the years, and you know, when you really begin to move into it, initially it will feel like you're stepping out on nothing. Because you're moving into another realm, another dimension. Amen. I remember I was witnessing young young Christian witnessing to this um, Satanist. He was he was a, sat a satanic worshiper that came to the youth group. And he was challenging me, if God is God, then have him break my contract. And he was a male dancer. And he had a contract for, uh, uh, what do they call those parties before marriages? Bachelorette, Bachelorette party. Bachelorette party. Yeah. <laughs> Where the seed of adultery sown for the di divorce. <laughs> you know, they watch all this flesh go crazy and then wonder why issues arise. Amen. But he was a dancer for those parties. He said, if God is if God, if he can get me out of that, then I'll serve him. I was like, was sure he'll get you out of that. <laughs> yeah, he'll he'll break that. Because this to him, this thing was set and could not be changed. And a lot of times people feel like they're in a situation where circumstances cannot be altered yeah. by anything they can see. Yeah. So I stepped out. I didn't hear God saying, yeah, I'll back you up if you say that. <laughs> I just stepped out in faith and said, yeah, he'll do that. Amen. And you know what? He did. I discovered something. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He did. Yeah. Last, I bumped into his brother. He had a twin. I bumped into his brother years ago. And last I heard, and it's hard to go always and verify all these. Stuff, last I heard, he was now a pastor. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gotta watch your words. Amen. Amen. Let's lift up these gifts before the Lord. Father, it is a privilege as sons and daughters in your kingdom to be able to bring to you royal gifts. Amen. Born of the grace of your word, not of the obligation of an onerous law, but Lord God, a, a grace and a devotion and a heart that is steadfast to you. The tithe and the free will, the first fruits, Father, we offer those up to you. Amen. The abundance that you put into our hands, Lord, to give to you, the God who has everything. <laughs> And we acknowledge you that you are the source. You are the origin. You are the father of every good gift and every perfect gift. Amen. And we acknowledge you now through, our, through the son, Jesus Christ. He's our high priest, the apostle of our confession of faith. Yes. And Lord, let that heavenly blessing rest upon the work of the hands of your people. And all that we do in every business endeavor, in every entrepreneurial, Lord God, endeavor. The work of our hands, ideas, every profession that we go into, Lord, that you would bless and increase your people, Lord, to own businesses, to have specialized uh, 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 positions created on their jobs that give them favor, Lord God, to serve you Amen. with what you bring into our lives. Lord God, that you would receive worship and everything. <clears throat> Father, that you would receive praise and everything because you are worthy Amen. to receive glory, honor, and power. For you created all things, oh, and by your will they exist and yeah. were created. And we thank you for this now, thank Lord. You. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give him a hand clap. We cannot praise him enough. And ten thousands of praises times ten thousands and thousands of thousands are not enough. We'll need all of eternity. Amen. And even then, it will never be satisfied That's praising the living God. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise That's right. Amen. He's so powerful. I thank God he gave us another language that we don't even understand just to praise him and give thanks. The Bible says he who prays in an unknown tongue gives thanks well. And many times you just have to step right beyond the offending natural world because many times the natural world, this natural order will offend us and hinder our advance and our approach to God. 
You just step right out of that natural world, step right out of your circumstances, and begin to praise him. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, I love doing that. I love, I love doing that. that. And then, you know, as we go forward, I just want to tell you, it, I don't know, it's just a lot harder to praise God, not praise God, but to, to preach to people in this month, in this year. You know why? Because no matter how much you preach, people think it's July. Do you, do you like? <laughs> Tracy's giving me a very a frown look. <laughs> I'll set you up for that one. I got another joke of the father for you. You ready for another one? <laughs> so the dad was sitting on the couch, and he kept asking his wife, asking his kids, and, and no one would respond to him. He kept asking, "What time do I have to go to the dentist? What time do I need to go? What time is my appointment?" And finally, the wife looked back and said, "Two thirty." Too hurt, too hurt, hurt, too oh. hurt, 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 his tooth was hurt. Okay, never mind. I didn't work too hard on that one this week, so just forgive me. <laughs> tooth hurt, get it? Tooth. Hurt. I got it. Hurt. Got it. They're like we got it. Move on. <laughs> Praise God. Well, we're on part nine. Okay. Birthdays. I was getting ready to move on. He's like, don't forget the birthdays. So we have two birthdays this month. Uh, Brother Andre, I just want to give him a shout out. He's on the road right now, Amen. Um, Amen. traveling with Sister Helen. They're they're on the road, but he's got a birthday, and a great friend of this ministry, and almost like a father okay. in the spirit to many of us, and a mentor to many of us. Pastor Shannon and, and a lot of us. Um, the Lee Grady's birthday is today. Hey. I believe he's 62. Oh, yeah. Brother Lee Grady, so we give him a shout out. Hey. And he sends text messages uh, every other week just to encourage and uplift. Uh, you know, brothers and sisters in the faith. He likes to encourage and impart wisdom, and we're just thankful for that. And happy birthday to anyone else that I may not know it's your birthday. Happy birthday, and I thank God for you. Praise his name. Praise God. All right, well, let's move into the message. We have been ministering on a series called The Last Days, titled The Last Days. We're at part nine already in this series. In part nine, we're going to take a different approach. Um, we're going to move into a divine look at the signs. Mm -hmm. A divine look at signs. Where's Pastor Shannon? Hi, baby. Pastor Shannon. Mm -hmm. All right, so can you go into my office and bring a blue folder out of my bag briefcase? A divine look at signs. Say signs. 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 But as we do, I just want to remind the church that our vision is that is that we are here for God, each other, and yes. the world. Amen. 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 And our divine Amen. mission is to know God, Amen. find freedom, Amen. discover your purpose, and make a difference in the world we live in. But as we do that, let's stand for our proclamation verse. And we've been declaring the word of the Lord from Titus, the book of Titus, chapter 1. And proclamation is probably one of the most powerful forms of prayer that we could exercise where we're literally speaking the word of God in the same spirit in which he spoke it and had it written. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Something important in here. Didn't want to forget that. So we have that up on the monitors, correct? Amen. Let's read. Paul, a bondservant of God, and apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth, which accords with godliness in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began, but has in due time manifested his word through preaching, which was committed to me according to the commandment of God, our Savior. Let's look at 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Father, we proclaim the word of God and the spirit of God together. Hallelujah. And as we pray, Lord God, we ask even now that you would open up our ears to hear in the spirit. Open up our hearts to believe and understand. Enlighten and open up our minds to know the truth, that that said truth would make us free. We thank you, Lord God, for moving in our midst now by the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Father, take us from the place of carnality and call us up into your spirit where we walk with you, where we're led by you and not by our flesh, where we, where we walk by you, Lord God, and not by our own, our own understanding, where we acknowledge you in all of our ways that you may direct our paths. We thank you, Lord, for reviving us in your word, reviving us in your spirit, teaching us your truth, Lord, that we would understand your word in the same spirit in which you spoke it. Lord, that we would not know these things carnally or in the strength of our own understanding, but that we would have the mind of Christ according to everything spoken and written by your spirit. Amen. We thank you for this now, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Praise his name. Amen. And we declare that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we know the kingdom belongs to him, does it not? Yes. Hallelujah. His is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And by the Lord's own revelation and word to us, we know that his kingdom is now where? Within. His kingdom is within. Say within me. within me. That's so important because many people are looking for a visible kingdom in this dispensation, and it will not happen. They're looking for an outward show, an outward appearance, for someone to say, see here or see there. And Jesus said, no, the kingdom of God is within you. The king's dominion is within you. Amen? Amen. And we're excited for that. Well, how do we know it's his dominion? He died to have it. He lived and he died to have it. He lived and purchased it with his own blood that we would have it. And I'm so excited for that. You know, a thing is only yours if you're willing to die for it. Did you realize that? It's only yours if you're willing to die for it. That's why the marriage bond, the marriage covenant is so sacred. And when, even in relationships, it, it, you can carry this in every sphere and strata and social order of society if you're not willing to die for something you're not worthy to have it amen jesus said greater love has no man than this that a man would lay down his life mm -hmm. for his friends amen amen when you're willing to die for someone you're willing to have it to own it Jesus was willing to die for his enemies. That's why he's the only one worthy to judge his enemies. Hallelujah. And that's a principle that holds true. As we're moving forward, I just want to encourage you, as you're living out these difficult days, these, these troublesome times, remember that faith is a fight. And remember, 1 Timothy 6.12 charges us to fight the good fight of faith. You ever wonder what a fight is? Just turn on Mike Tyson. Look at some old Bruce Lee films. Look at some war movies. You'll understand what fighting is all about. And faith, the spiritual warfare aspect is no different. Jude, the brother of Jesus, said, contend earnestly for the faith. Say contend. contend. That means you have to work at it. You have to strive for it. Why? Because there are other forces that are contesting our faith and our conquest in Christ. And we take God's word as the element of eternity, the thing that makes for eternal life is, God, is God's word. And Jesus held the word in such high esteem. And I'm always amazed at how the word made flesh still had to learn the word and study the word. We see him in the temple as, as early at the age of 12. Luke 2.52 says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Well, how did he do that? The word, the word, the word. He did that through the word. And when it comes to him confronting, I believe, the, the Sadducees, who were a sect of believers that only believe things super, superficially, they denied the supernatural aspect of God and his word. They only believe things on the level of the natural order. 
And he says to them, you are therefore mistaken in Mark 12, 24. You are therefore mistaken. And he says, this is why you're mistaken, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. And Jesus equates their powerless living with, uh, by the reason of not knowing the scriptures. If you want to begin to understand the power of God, know the scriptures. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And do not wait for a lightning bolt experience mm -hmm. to walk with it. Mm -hmm. That's seeking and looking for a sign. The greatest sign you have right now is his word. Amen. And his witness before us. And we thank God for that. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, as I said before, we've been looking at prophecy concerning the last days. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of prophecy, the Bible says, is the testimony of Jesus Christ. And living by the spirit of prophecy in the last days is about living a life of faith free from the spirit of fear. Say the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear is a governing spirit. And the scripture says God has not given to us the spirit of fear or a spirit of fear, Amen. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. It's amazing the, the ability that the spirit of fear has to torment the mind, to trouble the mind. But when you're built up in God's word, you have a strong resistance on a supernatural front. Because all spiritual warfare is supernatural. Amen. You may not see things exploding in the natural world like you would in a natural fight. But there could be things happening in the mind. Temptations, things, voices that you're hearing. Not every voice you hear in this life is your own voice. Come on. The flesh has a voice. It's not you. It's Amen. the flesh. The world does not know the difference between their flesh and who they are. Amen. But God speaks to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow that speaks of the flesh. And his word is a discerner of the thoughts and the true intentions of the heart. That's why it's so important. It cuts sharper than any two-edged sword and any surgeon, surgeon scalpel. The word of God is it has the ability to go in and dissect and discern between truth and error, what's motivating you, what's controlling you, what is trying to numb you to his presence. And it reveals what the nature of things really are. It's like a mirror. We look into it not only to see the imperfections in ourselves, but to see the perfection of Christ and to be transformed into that. Many times people use the word of God to their own condemnation, and that's not what it's for. He shows us our flaws and our faults only to leave them behind in pursuit of Jesus Christ and his perfection. That's because the eyes of God have the power to look at this world prophetically without fear and without the limitation of time. And to attain this, we must stand steadfast on the word of God, immovable or fall like the world for everything else. The world bows before everything else. If you look at the spirit of this world, they don't know who God is from a tree. They don't know who God is from a cow, from an insect, from their own carnal fleshly image. They don't know who God is, but Jesus Christ revealed who he is to us. I love what Pastor Shannon said this, this past Wednesday from last week. He said, the fear of man and love for the world causes men to yield to temptation. The fear of man. The love of this world causes the hearts of men to yield to temptation. And that's important when we're looking at and we're studying the word of God. Now, I want to speak to you prophetically, church, because I want you to understand that we're at a flashpoint in time. What is a flashpoint? It's a specific place in time and in prophecy, in history. It, it, it has particular events. And these things are already happening all over the world, whether we're aware of it or not. These are times of great trouble, great violence, great anger, and madness has flared up all around the world. We see a sea of violence. We see fires burning in the nation. We see nations in rage. We see a world that is at war with God. When you turn on the news and you listen to the reports and, and the activisms that used to be journal, you, you see a world that is enraged and at war with God. Why is there so much trouble? Why is there so much violence? Why is there so much anger and hatred? We are witnessing 
the, the, the climax of a world that is at war with God. That's why the angel proclaimed on the birthday of Christ, peace on earth and goodwill toward men. You know, someone said that this is not a Christian nation. We are a Christian nation, albeit backslidden Come on. in most parts. And Proverbs says the backslider in heart will be filled with the fruit of his own ways. So we're seeing what the, the conditions of the fruit of our own ways, uh, the ways that have turned away from God. The backslidden heart shall be filled with the fruit of their own ways. We are a Christian nation, yes. albeit backslidden, but we are founded on Ju Judeo-Christian principles. Yes. And anyone that denies and rejects that doesn't know history. Amen. They just don't know it. Amen. All the way back from the Mayflower Compact. Have we been perfect? No. But what human being on this planet is perfect? Come on. What nation on this planet is perfect? Has ever been perfect? What nation of men has not enslaved themselves or gone to war and enslaved others? But bless God, this is the freest nation that has ever existed on the planet. Perfect? No. But is your family perfect? No? You love people who are not perfect? Yes. Are you perfect? No. Is the preacher perfect? No. I think sometimes he puts us up there because we're the most imperfect just to show how strong he could be. Amen. You're like, oh, look how strong he is. You don't know how weak we really are. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the power. It's, it's the grace of God. But this is the freest nation. People die to get here. Right. People lose their lives to get to a country to be free that somehow the sons of this country grew up hating. Mm -hmm. How is that? Spoiler. Brian, how is that? How that yeah. Matt Prophet's getting a little unhinged, forgive me. How how is that? Yeah. How is it we have sons and daughters that grow up hating this nation and we have people dying to get here? Yep. How is that? Somebody answer that for me during the week. Send me an email, direct message me on Facebook. I'm trying to understand that from a logistical standpoint. Yeah. Praise God. Lord, help me. Help me, Jesus. But we're at a flashpoint in history. The most important message you or anyone else will hear in this life is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, yeah. Jesus Christ. That is the greatest movement. That Amen. name is above every other name and every other movement. Yeah. And it is the purest. Amen. It is the one that will liberate all others. Amen. It is the one faith and the one freedom that gives freedom and blessing to all others. So yes, we are a Christian nation that has afforded the freedom to worship to all religions. Whether they agree with us or not. Amen. And because they don't agree with us, that doesn't mean we hate them. That doesn't mean we vilify them. Unless they're doing dark and evil deeds, the Lord knows. Mm -hmm. Unless they're truly demonized and possessed, the Lord knows. Mm -hmm. But this Christian nation has afforded the free worship and liberty of all other religions. You go to the birthplaces of all other religions and try to worship Jesus. See how free they are. Right. Yeah. See how free they are. See how willing they are to coexist with you. It's time to be intellectually honest about these issues yes. and let truth stand for truth. truth. Amen. Amen. Yes, we are a Christian nation that receives all religions and all peoples and people can choose their own freedom mm -hmm. in light of the Constitution and everything that we hold precious and dear. Because God is a, is a just God, is he not? Yes, he is. He is. He is. So over 2,000 years ago, God began to show us precisely, and I mean precisely, how the last days would be. Mm -hmm. Why? So we would know, and the generation would know who got there. Matthew 24, 25 says this. Yeah. See, I have told you beforehand. Mm -hmm. Something interesting about this prophetic book. About half of the scriptures are, are pointing towards future events are written in a prophetic narrative of things to come. Let's look at John 14, 29. Because we have to understand the spirit of prophecy, the testimony of Jesus, living in the last days by faith without fear. Because he's told us beforehand. 
giving us evidence of his eternality, his eternal nature and Godhead because he can stand within time and speak outside of time. Hallelujah. That is powerful, Jesus. But John, the Gospel of John, 1429, and he says this, and now I have told you what? Before it comes. It's important to know things before they happen. How many of you value that kind of knowledge? Like if you were going to visit somebody and said, listen, there's a, there's a guard dog on this side. So when you come in, enter from the other side. Thank you for telling me that beforehand. Mm -hmm. Right? So he's saying, I told you this before it comes to pass. Why? That when it does come to pass, you may what? Believe. Believe. Yes. Evidence. Evidence that faithless people living in this world reject. But it's evidence nonetheless. It could be submitted in court as a valid testimony. They can choose to reject it, but it does not invalidate the evidence. The evidence is his word beforehand. In verse 30, he says this, I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. Mm -hmm. For the ruler, who do you think he's talking about? The enemy. The enemy. The ruler of this world is the devil. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the apostle Paul calls him the God, little g, mm -hmm. the God of this world, who the nations in their secret councils and their secret societies worship and serve. They just don't tell us. Why? We, they're creatures of darkness. They have to do things in the dark. Mm -hmm. The church worships in the light when we can underground and other places when government has become tyrannical and oppressive to the gospel. But he's told us beforehand that when it does come to pass, we may know and believe. And now we are contending with the ruler of this world. He said it before in John 12, 30. He calls him the ruler of this world. So, hallelujah. So he told us beforehand, so listen to this. If the mechanisms of Darwinian evolution were true, we would progressively be getting better and better and better as a species or as a society or civilization. Let's be intellectually honest. Are we getting better and better and more evolved? The answer is no. Are we becoming more tolerant of each other and our difference of views and our right to peacefully protest? No. no. Are we becoming more angry and more hateful and more bitter and more intolerant and more volatile? Yes. The answer is, and more divisive, the answer is yes. yes. So that's evidence submitted that the Darwinian theory of evolution, survival of the fittest, or the preservation of favored races, which people don't know that that's the secondary title, is the preservation of favored races. Races. What are the favored races, I wonder? Oh, it's the lighter evolved races. Hmm. They're the superior races. But they don't tell us that in the schools. So, warning after warning from the Holy Scriptures, and we see God pleading and interceding for the broken branches of humanity that fell away from him to be grafted back into his life before it's too late. Understand this, that as I speak, I'm speaking to you as spiritual and not carnal. And for the moment, what may seem to be foolish to some, but the more you hear, the more your ears are open to hear, the more you begin to understand that I'm speaking to you words of life and words of truth. And you'll begin to see as God sees and to hear as he hears. And I always have the ultimate judge right before my eyes and all of our eyes, which is the word of God. What is it? The word, the word, the word, the word. The word. Hallelujah. Let's look at Matthew 24. Turn to Matthew 24. And it's important to note what the Lord says in Luke. And as you're turning to Matthew, I'm just going to read briefly from Luke 21, 34. And Jesus says this, But take heed... To yourselves, say to yourselves. to yourselves, take heed to yourselves, lest your heart 
your hearts be weighed down. Say weighed down. Weighed down. Lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day come on you unexpectedly. So the heart being weighed down, discouraged, and it talks about drunkenness or the dependency on drugs and intoxicants or opioids to, to get through the cares of this life because it has a way of producing a false sense of spirituality and a false comfort. That's what drugs do. It is a carnal form of spirituality. You walk close enough with God, you will have a heightened sense of who you are. Hallelujah. There will be a sense of joy, a sense of happiness and elation because after all, he is the most high. Amen. God, Amen. he's the most high. You want to get really high, spend some time in his presence. Amen. We used to call it getting drunk in the spirit. Amen. Paul talks about that in the scriptures, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. But doing it the right way and having the right forces come over us to bring that expression out of us because it's there to be expressed, just not by carnal or materialistic means. It falls short and becomes earthly and carnal and fleshly when we need material things to satisfy spiritual urges or spiritual needs. That is carnality. That is materiality. And that is what this whole world that we live in is built upon. And he says this, for it will come on, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Literally, those who not only dwell on the earth, but whose dependency and all of their life's hope and joy and pleasure is in this world only. What's that mean? That means they don't look above the heavens. They just see the earth. They're dominated, controlled, manipulated, intimidated by everything that's going on in the earth. And he says this, watch therefore and pray that you always may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will, that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. I think his words are important enough to be followed. Yes. And I know we all agree. Amen. 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 He does have the best seller of all times in any culture, any age, at any point in history right. since the printing press, Gutenberg's printing press. No other book has outsold or outcirculated the Bible. Evidence submitted for supernatural origin. Someone said, well, that's boring. We better stay in it till it doesn't become boring. Because these are the words of life. Amen. Amen. Yes, they are. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So Matthew 24, looking at verse 4, he says this. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. Always warnings about being deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. For many will come in my name. Get ready for this. Saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. Mm -hmm. They will deceive many. Many will be deceived. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Verse 7, for nation will rise against nation. Now that's division. And we know that a house divided against itself will be brought to desolation. Yep. A house divided against itself shall not stand. And kingdom, he says, against kingdom. And this is political kingdoms, but I believe also spiritual kingdoms. Because the kingdom of God is at hand in the earth against the kingdom of darkness. That is the kingdom of the devil. And he goes on to say this, and these, what I believe, are the outworking of spiritual conflicts. These, this is what happens when spiritual warfare is so intense in the spirit, it begins to spill over. And you see things happening in the natural world because the battle is so severe. Mm -hmm. He says this, and there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes, plural, various places. I don't know if you've heard, but... Uh, the country of China has been under almost 40 days straight of rains. There are floods that are just ravaging their provinces, 600 feet in some places. That is absolutely just devastating and decimating that country right now. Reports of swarms of locusts, different things happening. I mean, they are literally being plagued. I'm surprised it's not on the news because there's a lot of people hurting and suffering right now. Wow. Just look it up. Look it up. It's sad. Pray for them because we have brothers and sisters over there in the underground church and they are, they are absolutely hurting yes. 
right now. But we'll see this more and more. I didn't go into pinpoint all the statistical data on earthquakes and different things like that, but we know that these things have been happening and they're getting progressively worse. He goes on to say this, verse 8, these are the beginning of sorrows. Take a deep sigh. It's only the beginning. All that. All that, and it's only the beginning of sorrows. So be ready. Brace yourselves. This is just the beginning. Verse 9, and this is coming. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by some of the nations. You will be hated by all nations. Why? For my name's sake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another. The audacity that, that some of these activists have on television to say that my Lord and Savior wasn't perfect. I'd like to see them say that about Muhammad and see what happens. But we're loving and forgiving. Lord, vengeance is yours, Jesus. Amen. We'll, we'll save that one for you. I yes. forgive him and I love him and I bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said, I'll repay. Vengeance is mine. Mm -hmm. Enoch said, behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. He's keeping an account. And if they don't repent, he's, he's got that on record. They need the blood of Jesus, just like we all do. Amen. But yeah, the audacity of some of these people, brothers and sisters, what they say about Christ. Mm, I wish they truly were, were uh, honest and just in their criticism. But all these are just the beginning of sorrows. Okay, verse 10. And then many will be offended. And as a result of being offended, they will betray one another. Now, when he's speaking this, he's speaking this in general. So you will see offenses. You will see betrayal on every social order, political, religious, and social betrayals. Mm -hmm. And many and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Mm -hmm. Verse 12, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. So this also is a spirit. The spirit of lawlessness is the ultimate wicked spirit. This is the final spirit that appears in a culture when it's at the end of degradation. Now let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. We've been spending a lot of time here, but it's because I want us to really understand and know the days and the trials which we are faced with. And understand the reason why, because it will give you hope beyond human limitation. Hope beyond human limitation. You know, when you see these errors and it's 18 indictments from the scripture upon the character and the ethics and the moral blemishes of humanity. These people have a sense that these things that they go after makes their life life. You ever ask yourself the question, what makes my life life? What makes my life worth living, worth having, worth being? What makes my life life? Jesus said that a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things in which he possesses. And that could be accomplishments, attainments, relationships, you name it. Life is not found there. Those who have their life only in this life tend to lose it many times when things shift and things shake. Because everything that is this life can be shaken will be shaken. So he goes on to say this, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 1, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. And this is the logical outworking of why. For men will be. Why will perilous times come? For men will be. What will they be? Lovers of themselves. And if they love themselves, they live only to serve themselves political, religious, social, whatever it is, personal. If they love only themselves, they live only to serve themselves. Lovers of money, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, we're seeing that, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, 
that loose slanders without self-control, no self-control whatsoever. Brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty. Here's another thing they love. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. So they're being driven more by perverse passion than principle that keeps something together. Yeah. It's like, what, what would an ocean be without the ocean bed? What would a river be without the channels that guide the river to its destination to and from? What are emotions and, and passions and pleasure that have no principle and no control? Just wild and crazy everywhere. The scripture says where there's no prophetic vision of God, the people cast off restraint. There is nothing left. And it doesn't mean that they don't have a vision. They just don't have the vision of God. They have something else, something dark and something more seated has clouded their hearts. And it's describing the progressive degeneration of, more, of human principle, characters, moral, ethics, uh, morality, standards of living. I would say even patriotism because it talks about traitors and we're in an age of traitors, whether it's traitors in families, traitors in politics to our country, traitors in the community, drug dealers are betraying their own people. You know that blacks kill blacks at a rate of 7,000. Last year it was 7,881. You know what the percentage of, of blacks that are killed by police officers? 0 0.001. 0 0.001. Statistically speaking, we have killed more of our own people than the Ku Klux Klan has in all of their history. In all of their history. No one told you that. You won't hear that from a politician that can't talk like that, but a mad prep pastor and a mad prophet can. Amen. 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 That's why we go to church. Amen. To hear the foolish, foolishness of preaching to save men's souls, the Bible Amen. says. Amen. 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 Yeah. Praise God. You will be glad when you get to heaven and God will say, see, my crazy way worked. Amen. <laughs> Amen. They'll call you crazy now, but when you're standing before God in eternity, Thank you'll be happy. Amen. Amen. You'll be happy that you chose. Say, I chose. I chose. You'll be happy that you weren't forced to. Mm -hmm. He didn't force you. He gave you the choice. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And I think that's the beauty about God. But we see the, the, the degeneration of human character, ethics, principles, and morals. In verse 5, it gets really disturbing because it says this. These people having a form of godliness. Well, these people have a form of godliness. But what do they do? Denying its power and from such people turn away. They can talk about religion and different things, but they have no power. And we know the message of the cross is the message of Jesus Christ and him crucified. And that is the power of God to transform and to save a life from the degradation we just talked about. Mm -hmm. So they, these people can be religious, but they don't embrace the power of God to transform our lives. Verse 6, it says, For this sort of those who creep into household and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, so the lust has become the leader. Verse 7, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janese and Jambres resisted Moses, so did these men also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith. So they're disapproved concerning the faith. They don't speak or teach on faith. They teach mankind how to follow their own passions and their own lusts and principles without God, which is very, very destructive and very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it, it leads men's souls to damnation. Mm -hmm. Now, we're talking about the spirit of lawlessness and I just want to focus in on, on this right now because there is a freedom of will, but there is not a freedom of consequences or responsibility. You know, we're in the midst of the beginning of, of the great falling away, the great apostasy. And we must understand that, that in the freedom of choice, there's always the illusion of time. The illusion of time before man is that there, there, that there are no divine consequences or accountability 
beyond the conceit of our own free will. So what's that mean? That means people just think we just get to choose and be whatever I want because I made that decision. And that is one of the illusions and the deceptions of time. Because it looks like there's no judgment awaiting beyond this life. I do whatever I want to do. Me, me, and only me. Ecclesiastes 8, 7, Solomon's wisdom says this, because a sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the hearts of the sons of men are fully accomplished in them to do evil. So what does that mean? That means because it looks like they're getting away in the moment, there's nothing restraining their hearts from acting out of that evil, whether it's murdering, killing, stealing, or destroying. It looks like they're getting away. But there's a judgment of God approaching. So we're dealing with now in this land the spirit of lawlessness. And beloved, listen to me. The shadow concerning spiritual warfare now, because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, the Bible says. The shadow of a thing usually falls before the presence of the thing. Amen. In the Old Testament, we see types and shadows of Christ before we encounter his substance in the earth. Do we not? We see that, types and shadows leading up to the substance, which is Christ Jesus, the revelation of the word becoming flesh. Hear me prophetically. The shadow of Antichrist has fallen upon the face of the world. Mm -hmm. yeah, my Lord, my Lord. Mm -hmm. His foot soldiers right now are marching. Mm -hmm. the, his alien army of elite intellectuals have been in our universities for decades, teaching and indoctrinating and fostering a lie. Mm -hmm. We are dealing with a fatherless generation yes. in our land. Not only did they grow up without their earthly father, they have no knowledge of the face of their heavenly father because of the rejection of Christ Jesus. Come on. So we're dealing with this generation that, is, that has come up to become a plague upon the land and upon society. But this is not something that wasn't forewarned or talked about. Mm -hmm. Back in 1963, Kenneth Hagin Sr. had a prophetic word. Now, I've listened to many of his teachings over the years, but this one caught my ear because he was speaking by the spirit of prophecy. And he's a strong faith preacher. Every time he preached, he, he would preach on Mark 11, 23, 24. He would mention that at some point because God healed him of an incurable disease just on those scriptures alone. And that's that. we'll say that for another story, but that's, that's a testimony that he had. But this is his, his prophecy back in 1963. Who's good at math? How many years ago was that? Uh, Who's good at math? 1963. 57 years ago. 57 years ago. Listen to what he said. Marty. What's that? Marty. <laughs> the hand of the Lord was upon me. The spirit of God moved upon me. The voice of God spoke unto me and said, come up, come up hither, son of man. And I went up, as it were, up into the air. And stood with him, the head of the church, even the Lord Jesus Christ, in the air. And as I looked down upon the ground, I could see as a mountain laid out before me, the entire nation of all of the states of the continent of the United States. And as I looked, he said, Behold, son, and I shall show you that which shall come to pass and that with the eyes of, of man, of, or that with the eyes of many shall see, and they shall remember that the ears heard, it shall come to pass. For there came a dark hand up out of the ocean from the east, even the Atlantic Ocean. And prophetically speaking, when you're dealing with prophetic imagery, anything coming out of the sea or out of the ocean represents a mass of people, symbolically. And it came up out of the sea as a hand, and it rose up into the air and became a dark cloud, and it filled the whole atmosphere, and it swept in like a storm from sea. And I said, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, what is the meaning of this? And he spake unto me and said, Son, that is the darkness of atheistic communism that is sweeping across the nation. Even in the minds of men in high places and politicians with great power. And this nation shall not grow more strong. And ye shall never have more liberty than you have right now. 
You shall never have more liberty than you have now. 57 years ago. Do you feel your liberty being encroached upon? Yeah. Listen, wow. beloved. It's by design. Amen. These things are not happening by accident or just out of thin air. This is the crafted course of this world. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. The course of this world. Mm -hmm. The liberties that you've known and as you've seen them shall... Let's see here. The liberties that you have known and as you've seen them shall be seized, shall be taken from you. And I looked again and I could see upon the mountain a blot as though an, a bottle of ink had been spilled and it spread out over several states in the south and east. And I looked and I could see spots splotched all over the map. And I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? And he said, Communistic inspired hatred among racists shall cause greater turmoil than your nation has ever seen before. Wow. Hmm. Communistic inspired hatred because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Among racists, please look up and study what a racist is. Right. Right. Shall cause greater turmoil than your nation has ever seen before. Are we witnessing that today? Yea, yeah. it is not the will of God, but men's hearts are perverse, for men will be. Men's hearts are perverse. They walk without the love of God and seek to have their own way, and so it shall be worse than you have seen. And I said, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, is there any remedy? Is there any remedy? What shall the answer be? Then he said, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceived and being deceived. And then I said, oh, Lord, do we not have something to look forward to in the future except the darkness and the blackness and war and destruction and evil? And we know that he's, the Lord is speaking from the scriptures because... 2 Timothy 3.13 says, Evil men and imposters shall grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And that word imposter literally means seducer or enchanter, a worker of spells. But they don't do this before our eyes. You have to be able to discern wickedness when you look at an individual and be able to see who they are in the spirit. Amen. How many fall by the guise of good intentions? But Jesus said, wisdom is justified by her children, and a tree is known by its fruit. Just look at the actions. Look at the behavior. Look at the, look at the actions. What are they saying by what they do? Then he said, son of man, forget not your text. For you look at the things not seen. And so then I looked into the spirit realm, and I saw falling upon that mountain a ball of fire from heaven. Say ball of fire. Ball of fire. Goodness gracious. Great balls of fire. <laughs> the closer to the earth, the bigger, it, or the closer the earth it got, the bigger it got. Then it came to the earth and it divided into small balls of sparks of fire. It fell upon men and I saw an army of men rise up and it seemed as though their hands were fire. And they sat upon their heads, tongues of fire. When I first saw it, I thought their whole head was a hedge of fire like their hands, but it was tongues of fire, tongues of fire leaping. And I said, what me, what's the meaning of this? And he said, before, before the worst is to come, the day of darkness is coming. There shall be those who will carry the fullness of my truth and the fire, not only to the state of this nation, but to many other places. For their work is to that they must be done first spiritually before the Lord comes. Now prepare your hearts for the time is at hand and the beginning is now. And he shall see and he shall know for the hand of the Lord is upon you and many others to be used in these last days. And the work shall progress. Say thank God. Thank God. So there's a measure of hope that he gave in this vision and in this prophecy so it's as if those who are in the dark shall grow darker, but those who are in the light shall shine brighter. 
Amen. Amen. It's like the image I chose to use for this series, The Last Days, where there's the wheat and then there's the tares. Mm -hmm. And both grow up together until the time of the harvest. You can't tell which is which. But here's the difference about the wheat. The wheat has fruit you can eat. And that speaks of God's truth that lives in us. Amen. The truth of Christ Jesus that we carry to the nations, to our neighborhoods, to each other. We carry that truth within us. The, the tares don't have any fruit. They don't have anything good within them. Now, as we're concluding here, I just want to share with you the ways of darkness and the ways of the dead compared to the ways of the living. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Right. It says it again in Proverbs 16, verse 25. Proverbs 16, verse 2 says this, All the ways of man are pure in his own eyes. Think about that. All the ways of man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. Mm -hmm. So who's the ultimate judge? The Lord. The Lord. Through his word, the Lord weighs the spirit. Yes. There is a way that appears to be right to a natural minded man, but in the end it leads only to death. There's a path before each person that seems right, but it's end, but it ends in death. That's the wages of sin. You may think that this is the contemporary English version, it says this you may think you're on the right road and still end up dead. The Brenton Septuagint translation says this, there is a way which seems to be right with men, but the ends of it reach to the depths of hell. Well, how do you know when, on the, when you're on that path? The enemy, the thief comes, but for one reason, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. David said, by the word of the Lord, I've kept my feet from the paths of the destroyer. So whenever there's a motivation for destruction and rage and rioting and, 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 and just committing things that are awful in the land, you know what spirit is behind it. You should be able to see and identify that spirit. Terrorism being defined as the unlawful use of violence and intimidation, especially against civilians or innocent people in the pursuit of political gain. That is the methodology of terrorism in the pursuit of political gain. A riot is a form of civil disorder commonly characterized by a group or a mob mentality lashing out in violent public disturbances against property, against people. Riots typically involve the destruction of property, public or private. The property targeted varies depending on the riot inclination, motivations, or the people involved. A riot is a violent disturbance of peace by a crowd. If you study mob mentality in the Bible, they never worked for any good. If you, if you study out the historic accomplishments of people who accomplished great things, it was never in a mob, but it was a unified joint effort. The, the, Herbert Spencer says this, there is a principle which is a bar against all information, which is proof against all arguments, and which cannot fail to keep a man in everlasting ignorance. And that principle is contempt prior to examination. What's that mean? Do your homework. Amen. Do your research. Amen. Know what they're Come saying. On. Know who the founders are. Right. Know what spirit motivates them. Know what their goals are. Do your homework. Have a mind like the Bereans. Who are the Bereans? It says in the book of Acts, the Bereans were those of a noble mind, that they searched the scriptures daily to see if what Paul was telling them was true. Right. Come on. So they fact-checked Paul through the gospel. That's right. right. Know Amen. who we're following and who we're listening to. Amen. What is a mob? A mob is a large crowd of people, especially one that is disorderly, and intent on causing trouble, harm, or violence in the land. Right. So we have to research and know these things in order to know properly what we're looking at when we see them, or else we'll be deceived with the rest of the masses. Right. Unless we'll just be moved by the things that are seen and not the things that are unseen. 
Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. The church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the greatest movement in the earth right now. And those who stand with her. We know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the one that lays down his life not only for his sheep. He loves his enemies so much he lays down his life for his enemies. And he has the authority to tell us to bless those who curse us, do good to those who hate us, pray for those who spitefully use us and abuse us, that we may be sons of our Father together in his kingdom. There's no greater love in the earth than his love. We believe that. Amen. Amen. Let's lift our hands to the heavens. Let's pray this together. Heavenly Father, Father, today we receive receive the love of your truth truth, that we should be saved. saved. All of us us who believe on your name, who believe on on you, through the life of your Son, son. Jesus Christ, Christ, the man of Nazareth, Nazareth, died for my sins, sins, shed his own blood, blood, purchased my life forever, forever, that I should live for him him as my Lord and Savior, Savior, for he is King of kings kings, and Lord of lords. lords. Heavenly Father, Father, by your Holy Spirit, Spirit, help me to know Jesus Jesus more and more 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 as my Lord and Savior, Savior, but also also as the King King and the Lord he is, is. not just a religious buddy, not a religious religious token, not not a religious gesture, but he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I confess him now, believing in my heart for his righteousness and his salvation. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah.